What's up you guys, it's Steve here and Stimulus is erupting. <laughs> this is your Stimulus Check Update and Stimulus Package Update. Now we just finished wrapping up the whole debt ceiling issue and now we're going on to Stimulus already. And take a look you guys, we're seeing articles coming out like this. Bernie Sanders erupts at Joe Manchin and a deeper dispute is revealed. Take a look, here's another one. Sanders blasts Manchin over the spending bill in a fiery press conference. And yes, there was a press conference that came out yesterday. And just to be clear, Bernie Sanders was not happy with Senator Joe Manchin's statements. Now, if you missed that, check out my previous video. I shared with you the entire speech, but I'm going to share with you just a small clip in today's video just to give you a quick reminder. And then we're going to be taking a look at what Bernie Sanders had to say as he was not happy. Now, also, that's not all. Bernie Sanders is very upset. Take a look, you guys. Sanders declines to sign a statement condemning the protests against Senator Cinema. That is right. Now, if you missed the video footage, I shared it with you in a previous video where Kirsten Cinema actually had protesters confront her at ASU. They followed her into the bathroom. They were shouting at her, chanting the entire time while she was in there and after she came out. And Bernie Sanders says, I don't condemn that behavior. He says maybe Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin should do their job and they should help get through the next reconciliation bill <laughs> and does not condemn the protesters. Let me know your thoughts, you guys. Man, Sanders is serious about this. And take a look though, you guys. Joe Manchin said that he does not want an entitlement society. Like I said, I'm going to be sharing with you the video footage so you can see it for yourself. And at this very moment, Senator Joe Manchin is actually in negotiations with President Joe Biden. Take a look, you guys. Manchin huddles on the reconciliation with Biden, and we're hearing that Joe Manchin has actually come out and doubled down, that he wants to cut this down significantly and take a look at his message to progressives. Manchin demands progressives pick only one of three family policy priorities, saying, you got three in there, pick your favorite one, ditch the other two. That is right. Take a look, you guys. Senator Joe Manchin is telling colleagues that progressives need to pick just one of President Joe Biden's three signature policies for helping working families and discard the other two. People familiar with the matter tell Axios. You guys, take a look at this. By forcing progressives to choose among an expanded child tax credit, a paid family medical leave, or subsidies for childcare, Manchin is complicating any potential deal, but he's also signaling that his willingness to negotiate. Wow. Let me know your thoughts, you guys. If you had to pick one of the three, what would it be? Or do you think that that is not okay? I'm pretty sure progressives are not going to be happy with what Joe Manchin is saying. But you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But let's dive right in and get you caught up on the latest as right now this is taking center stage stimulus as we've avoided a debt ceiling crisis and the government shutdown. Those are going to get pushed out till December. They will come right back around. But at this moment, we're going to be addressing stimulus. So let's go ahead and dive right in, get you caught up on the latest. I'm going to be sharing with you the video footage. But before we do, if you could do me a quick favor, just takes a second. If you like and appreciate these updates, don't forget to take a quick moment to just smash that like button. I would appreciate it. Helps out the channel a ton. Just lets the YouTube algorithm know that you appreciate the updates and they're going to continue to promote my channel and my videos. Thank you so much. Also, leave your comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything that you're about to watch and share this out if you think it's going to help out other people. Also, don't forget, if this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button, turn on that notification bell. Come join the viewing community. Come join the Ram fam, we like to call it. I'll keep you up to date on all this stuff because I know there is a lot going on right now. And you guys, I'll keep you up to date on stimulus, infrastructure, Congress, the economy, unemployment, anything going on right now. And yes, turn on those notifications because I am just uploading as the news comes out. I'm not even adhering to my regular 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time schedule. Just whenever it comes out, I'm going to send you some news. And if you got any specific questions for me, be sure to shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at steveram3, you guys. But with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. And let's start off with this quick recap of what it was that Joe Manchin had to say that got Bernie Sanders so fired up. And then we're going to be taking a look at Bernie Sanders' speech and his questions from reporters on everything having to do with the $3.5 trillion reconciliation human infrastructure stimulus bill. Let me make it very clear, there's been a lot of speculation about what number on reconciliation. My number has been 1.5. I've been very clear and I think you all have gotten an outline of how I got to 1.5. I don't believe that we should turn our society into an entitlement society. I think that we should still be a compassionate, rewarding society. I think that fares best for all of us. But compassion means taking care of those who can't take care of themselves. Whether they're young, whether they've had some type of a, of, of a, um, a challenge in life, whether it be mental or physical, 
Those are responsibilities that we have, and we can all meet those responsibilities. And I feel very strongly about that. And we will continue. This is going to take time to get this done. Getting it done quickly is not going to benefit anybody. So let's make sure that we do it and do it right. So there you have it. That was the clip that got Senator Bernie Sanders really fired up as we heard Joe Manchin say, I've been very clear. 1.5 trillion is the highest number that I believe we should go. And I do believe that we should address all of these issues, but also I don't believe we should go any higher because I do not want to create an entitlement society. So you guys, let's take a look at what Bernie Sanders had to say. And uh, he was not happy with those statements. And uh, I'm waiting to see how he's going to be responding to this pick one of three provisions statement coming from Manchin as well. And you guys, like I said, Manchin right now, he's meeting with President Joe Biden. So we're going to be seeing some more news coming out on this very soon. But let's take a look at what Bernie Sanders had to say. Uh, I want to say a few words about the three and a half trillion dollar reconciliation bill that a number of us are fighting for. And I'd also like to make some brief comments uh, about what Senator Manchin uh, said earlier today. Now, Senator Manchin, as I understand it, talked about today about not wanting to see our country become an entitlement society. Well, I am not exactly sure what he means by that. Does that mean that we end the $300 direct payments for working class parents which have cut childhood poverty in this country as a result of the American Rescue Plan in half? Is protecting working families and cutting childhood poverty an entitlement? Does Senator Manchin think we should once again have one of the highest levels of childhood poverty of any major country on earth? At a time when millions of seniors in Vermont in West Virginia, all across this country, have teeth in their mouths that are rotting when they can't afford hearing aids in order to communicate with their grandchildren, and when they can't afford a pair of glasses in order to read a newspaper. Does Senator Manchin really believe that seniors are not entitled to digest their food and that they're not entitled to hear and see properly? Is that really too much to ask in the richest country on earth that elderly people have teeth in their mouth and can see and can hear. The Senator man should not believe that we have to end the absurdity of the United States paying by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, sometimes 10 times more for a particular drug than is paid in Canada or other countries around the world. Does Senator Manchin believe that we should be the only major country on earth not to guarantee paid family and medical leave, and that working mothers should not be able to stay home with a child who is sick? Are workers not entitled to be able to do that? Does Senator Manchin believe that working class parents in West Virginia and Vermont should not have to pay? Does he believe that they should have to pay? 25 or 30 percent of their incomes on child care all over this country. Working class families are paying 25 or 30 percent of their incomes on child care so that they could go out and do their jobs. Are the children of this country not entitled to high quality child care and pre-K education? Senator Manchin not believe that working families in this country are entitled, entitled to affordable housing and that we should not have some 600,000 people in America, including many veterans, sleeping out on the streets. The Senator Manchin not believe that at a time when we have a major labor shortage in many parts of this country, because our young people lack the skills they need, that they are not entitled to at least two years of free community college so they can get the training in order to go out and get the good paying jobs that are there. And perhaps most importantly, does Senator Manchin not believe what the scientists are telling us? That we face an existential threat regarding climate change and that it is absolutely imperative that we move boldly to cut carbon emissions. Scientists have told us we're on a red alert. Some of you know the science, some number of scientists received the Nobel Prize for their work on climate change. 
Does Senator Manchin not believe that our children and grandchildren are entitled to live in a country and a world that is healthy and is habitable? Senator Manchin has been extremely critical of the three and a half trillion dollar proposal that many of us support. In fact, nine out of 11 members of the Budget Committee support. But the time is long overdue for him to tell us with specificity, not generalities, we're beyond generalities, with specificity, what he wants and what he does not want, and to explain that to the people of West Virginia and America. I look forward to working with Senator Manchin and everyone else in the Senate to pass a strong reconciliation bill, as well as a bipartisan infrastructure bill. Thank you. Thank you. Garrett? I mean, Senator, you, you got there. I mean, I feel like for weeks you have not wanted to take questions about other senators' objections to this bill, especially <laughs> Senator Manchin. <laughs> but is it now incumbent upon him to come out and say, this is what I'm for, that's this is how I get that's exactly what I'm. That's exactly what I'm saying here. Look, it's, <clears throat> it's very easy to use vague phraseology and even, even when you talk about one and a half trillion, as I understand it, Senator Manchin says he believes in Medicare negotiating prescription drugs. Okay, good. Great. In the House bill, that will save us $700 billion. Now, Senator Manchin says that he only wants to spend $1.5 trillion. Is that in addition to the seven? Hundred, which would already take you up to 2.2. I don't know the answer to that. You don't know the answer to that. You know, Senator Manchin says he wants to tax the wealthy. All right, good. The House Ways and Needs Committee passed a proposal which includes, as I understand it, about $2 trillion in doing away with tax breaks for the wealthy and large corporations. Is that where Mr. Manchin is? So it's not good enough to be vague. And I do not understand, to be honest with you, how in this time, in world history, you cannot talk about the crisis of climate change and tell us what you want to do. That is really inexcusable. As I've said many, many times, and I say this as a grandparent, I do not want my generation to have to look their kids and grandchildren in the eye and say, yes, we failed you, and the planet is now uninhabitable. Yeah. Senator, since we're talking about specificity here, and you're looking for that from Senator Manchin, some of your House colleagues have said that they understand now that 3.5 is not a realistic top number. The president has also said that. Do you, are you willing to concede that 3.5 well, is, is too much right no, now? If you're you, look, number? am I willing to concede the 3? No. What I do believe 3.5 is too little, to be frank with you. Now, there's what I have said, and, and will repeat, this is going to be a give and take. This is part of the process, and we will be in the room in that give and take. Yes, ma'am. Um, you, and, you and Senator Manchin just have different fundamental views of government's role in society and what government should do. Yes. I mean, how do you resolve such philosophical differences? Good. That's a very good question. And I'm not here to disparage Senator Manchin, uh, you know, and I respect him for his, his, his he, he, you know, you're right, we, we differ. What I would say is this. You know, and I know a lot of the media talks about, you know, compromise and all that stuff. We got 48 senators who support three and a half trillion. We got two who do not. Now, to be very honest with you, as I think all of you know, I believe that our current health care system is totally dysfunctional. And I strongly, strongly believe in a Medicare for all single payer program. I could, in five minutes, go to Chuck Schumer, Senate Majority Leader, and say, Chuck, I can't support this bill unless you have a Medicare for all provision in there. But I'm not going to do that because I know, I don't know how many, maybe half the members of the caucus, a third of the members of the caucus, that would be irresponsible. So my concern with Mr. Manchin is not so much what his views are, I disagree with him, but it is that it is wrong. It is really not playing fair that one or two people think that they should be able to stop what 48 members of the Democratic caucus want, what the American people want, what the President of the United States wants. That would be my position. So Senator Manchin has a right to fight for his point of view. He has not only a right to be heard, he has a right to get some compromises. He's a member of the Senate. But two people do not have the right to sabotage what 48 want and what the President of the United States want. That, to me, is wrong. Yes, ma'am. Since you are the budget chairman and you obviously help craft this $3.5 plan, 
would you just would it be feasible for you to get in a room with Senator Manchin and kind of hammer this out? And why hasn't that happened to this well, point? Well, we do get in a room. Uh, we Senator Manchin is part of leadership. I'm part of leadership, and without going further, that discussion has taken place, and I think I expect will continue to take place. Yes, ma'am. In your discussions with we'll allow it, please. in your discussions with President Biden, you know. Have you encouraged him to, to to not scale that number back, you know, after his most recent comments? Well, but look, this is what I think. As I've said before, look, if we were in a room and in a caucus where half the people wanted something lower and half the people wanted something higher, you know, you've got to go somewhere in the middle. We're not in that position. So I think there's got to be some give or take. But to ask 48 people to go down to where two people want, that just seems to me unfair, not to mention when poll after poll shows where the American people want us to be. It's not where Mr. Manchin is. All right, maybe one or two questions. Yes, sir. Senator, when you listed off the, the measures that are popular that you seem to think Manchin is opposed to, is it your understanding that Senator Manchin is calling for significant cuts to be pulled out of this, or is there still a conversation alive about well, means that's a great question. And, and that Ask thing. him. I mean, that's exactly my point. We need some specificity here. It's not good enough to be vague. You want to cut child care? How much do you want to cut child care? You want to cut climate? Cut climate. What? How much do you want to do that? Tell us with some specificity what you want. All right, last question, ma'am. So you've called out uh, Senator Manchin. Would you also like to see specificity from Senator Sinema? Absolutely. As to what she Absolutely. Uh, Senator, as I understand it, you know, I'm not privy to everything here. Uh, in some cases, you guys know more than I do. But I don't think that's, you know, I think Senator uh, Sinema's position has been that she doesn't, quote, unquote, negotiate publicly. And I don't know what that means. It, 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 we don't know where she's coming from. What I have heard, and I don't know if this is accurate, this is a problem. I have heard that she is opposed to having uh, Medicare negotiate prescription drug prices with the pharmaceutical industry and lowering prescription drug prices. I have heard that she is opposed uh, to asking the wealthy and large corporations to pay their fair share of taxes. That is what I have heard. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think to answer your question, yeah, I would love to see you. In the same sense as, as Senator Manchin, tell us what you want. Don't worry. Thanks very much. Thank you, Senator. So there you have it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. That was Senator Bernie Sanders. And we heard him say that he didn't think it was pretty much fair what Senator Joe Manchin was doing right now, where we have 48 senators that are all saying they want one thing and two others that are trying to pull everything their way. And he's saying that anybody could do that. He said he could do it with any provision that he wanted. There's a lot of things that he doesn't agree with, but he said it doesn't think it's fair for just one person when everybody else wants something else. Let me know your guys' thoughts. But as I shared with you, we heard right now, Joe Manchin is meeting with the president and he's putting down some additional demands that are cutting more provisions. So you guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'm sure we're gonna be hearing more news coming out the stimulus is taking the front stage, and I'll be sure to share with you here on the channel. But with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you made it this far and you haven't already, don't forget, take a quick second to smash that like button. I would appreciate it. Helps out the channel a ton. Just takes a second. Thank you so much. Leave your comments. Share this out. If this is your first time here, hit the subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell. If you got any questions for me, shoot them to me in the DM on Instagram at steveram3. And with that being said, you guys, hope this reaches you well. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care. God bless. This is Steve.